Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tech Down Over. We've got down and over, both in the same room after a while. It's been a while since we've done a show. And uh, with the holidays and everything and just just all sorts of issues we've had in here. Well, we had major fires and all that. So, But we're back. So we're going to do a show. We've done a couple of in individual podcasts, but now we're doing a whole show. And uh, Jeff, how have you been? Oh, good. Thank you. So you may hear some noise in the background. It's my dog snoring. I don't know if it's coming through, but he's all of a sudden started to snore. But with the festive season uh, over and just ready for the New Year's, I'm thinking about what shall I buy or what I'll try to stop myself from well, buying in the New Year. Well, let's let's run our intro real quick. <laughs> Oh. Well, Jeff, um, I don't know. Do you really want to spend any money? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Sony A9. Actually, it's not on. Let me turn it on. So this is the Sony A9. You could probably see the lens a little bit. You might be able to see something. It's probably not too bright. Um Sony A9 with the 70 to 200 millimeter f4.0. This lens is an absolute beauty. It looks good, but it's also a beauty. Now you notice it's not that big a lens. No, the Canon is is a lot bigger than this. So is the Nikon. Um, but when I take off this, so that's even you know, that's so you can see the whole lens. And then if I put on the uh, the hood, uh, let me get that on right. I'm being a dork. There we go. There we go. There we don't go. <laughs> there it went. Well, folks, there goes another expensive lens down the tube. But I've only broken one lens in my life, and, <laughs> and that was this year. It was bad. Well, well, you didn't. You threw the camera as well, so you didn't just do. No, break, it was a, it was lens. complete. Yeah, I didn't mess around. So that's how long it is with the. Um, mm. And it's not that big. It doesn't weigh that much. It's only, it's about a two pound lens. Camera doesn't weigh more than like a pound and a half. It's not very heavy. Got the battery grip on it. So what you're seeing here is the battery grip or the vertical grip. Mm -hmm. Then you've got, that has to hold two batteries pretty long term. I mean, you, we've been shooting with this, what, about a week and a half? And we're still at 78% battery life. I'm just going, <laughs> this can't be. Yeah, it made a big big difference with that new battery that yeah, they put on. It's a, well, I've got two in there. So probably one went down and we're 78% of the second one. Uh, but I'm impressed. It, it shoots really well. Can't You can hear the beep, maybe. Yep, I can hear the beep, yep. Um, it's fast. This thing is fast. Uh, we just put out the Tech Down Over 142, which is a test of the... Uh, autofocus continuous face tracking and I think you were just watching that before we started and that is amazing it catches a face uh, moving turning circling uh, I think this beats the Canon dual pixel autofocus uh, I've had and not because autofocus is worse per se it's because they have so many focus points if you look at most of the Canon cameras, they don't have, a lot of them still have 49, 59, 69, 75. They don't have a lot of, this has 693 focus points. Yeah. It's like, and, and it what, goes what I found interesting the, on that shot that you did yeah. was uh, you had it on the face focus and then you was walking away from the camera. So it was kept focus on to a, an automobile in the background. Okay. And you were out of focus, but as soon as you turned around, it it got you. Did it really? It's, yeah. And it was it was really great to see that. Oh, it it really is working. So it saw your your body walking away, yeah. so the autofocus didn't pick up on you. Well, you know, I was I, I was I was actually a little surprised because I was half thinking once I turned around, I would have focus on my butt and go, well, that's his other face. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that one. <laughs> <laughs> now that would have been embarrassing, but that's what I thought it was going to do. <laughs> So. Well, you could you could mark it the new new thing the the new Zanardi butt f butt, <laughs> butt detector. Focus. This is butt focus, butt guys. Focus. <laughs> and this is the uh, fifty millimeter. This is the uh, one we shot that with the fifty five millimeter. Oh, was this that the a, one you shot that one with? Yeah, because that was a, I was, I was wondering because it was really good shot. It's an f one point eight, very nice glass. It's fast, and you know Harold and I were commenting. 
it makes no noise when it focuses. You can't really hear it. It's mm. extre- I haven't heard one of these lenses do anything other than that's it. Nothing. That's, no. I'm impressed. Um, you know, the Canon lenses, even the step motors are sort of noisy. It's still kind of, you still hear it. Um, the Panasonics are pretty quiet. Some of them are noisier. Uh, but this is, you know, Sony's got good glass. I, I have to admit, I'm, I'm surprised because I've, I've been a Sony basher for years because I didn't like the size. I didn't like the heating. And, and now I'm going, mm. you know, I like it. It's fun. Um, so I guess I'm now a Sony shooter. Well, I think the thing is with like any brand that you go to, there's there's things that put people off and like there's always going to be a couple of things that you don't like with a brand, but Sony always had that overheating yes. and the battery. Stupid and so that things. was two things everybody didn't like and then they might have had two other things like you did, but they're the main things, overheating and battery. If you get rid of them and they seem to have done that, you can put up with the slight menu disapproval you can i'll just learn to live with that menu or i'll get used to a different menu so uh, it's just the different things that you get used to but i think they've really come on to that with that uh, at the a9 and the new a7 we got that uh, in today too um so that just walked in the door i put it together but we don't even have a lens on it yet uh, which one was that that's the a7r3 so we just, oh, you've you got that as well. We got that one as well. Uh, so I'm we, just going to have to come over and play for a week. <laughs> we we invested in three Sony cameras all at once, and so and lenses. I think we got like seven or eight lenses. So we we went all out. First time we've actually invested that much into any new system that quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how much I I was impressed by it, and and I like it. It's pretty good. Now here's something everybody needs. This is actually really nice if you can see it. This is a black rapid wrist strap yeah and i'm hearing people bitching oh it's so expensive it's 27 dollars oh. 27 dollars to protect your four grand camera and lens i was going to say you've got about five grand attached yeah. to your hand and, what's and 29 thing, 95. yeah and this thing has the parachute uh type um strap it's a nylon kind of parachute strap it's solid <laughs> It's solid. I already tried dropping it just to see it. It held beautifully. Um, I knew it would. I thought you meant parachute less low. Yeah, no, 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 no. Across the thing, it would would glide down. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's those nylon. I think it's what they make parachute straps out of. But yeah, it's and it's got a beautiful. Let me show you this if you can see it. Um, So it has several. It's kind of clunky because I'm holding it kind of backwards. But on this, you've got multiple locks. So you've got this thing that opens up. Mm -hmm. Could you see that? So there's that yep. so that closes it so that you can't open you can't open that lock without that thing being open. Then you have to unscrew this, bring it mm-hmm. down to get it up, and then you can also lock it so with this it'll never unscrew. That makes it very, very solid. So black rapid, good job. This is a very mm-hmm. nice camera wrist strap that just does a wonderful job. I'm impressed when I see things like this. Now, Rick, what what you've got there is this, the Sony A9 with the battery grip. Yes. And then, you know, that what, what was the smaller lens you filmed that one with the outside? What was that one? The That was the 55 millimeter. The 55 millimeter. Which is this one. And so what what was the sort of, what would, with the the 55 millimeter, the battery grip and the, the camera, what would that be worth? What's the uh, retail on that? So that would be 48, probably 5,800. It's a, this is about a thousand dollar lens. It's a little expensive for a fifty five, but you know it works and it's very solid. It's got great focus, nice micro contrast. It's sharp. Um, I don't know. It's a good lens. So that now you could get a thirty five millimeter or, or thirty millimeter Sigma. Uh, that's thirty five millimeter Sigma is amazing. It's only about a four hundred dollar lens. It is beautiful, and, and it's real close to... And remember, that sometimes there is a little bit of a crop, depending on what lens you use, and I think that one is okay. I think that's an FE lens, which is their full-frame lens. It mm-hmm. just looks good. It's, it's a, a, one of those, gotta have... I have that right now on the um, A6500, and it looks beautiful. Um, they have a 35 millimeter that's expensive. That's about 1300 It's a beautiful lens. It's a little bit bigger... It's bigger than this by about double. 
But that lens is just gorgeous. Uh, Darren Miles did a review on it. It does a great job. It's a it's a beautiful. He said it was a little quirky on the autofocus, and I haven't found that yet. Uh, so far, it's been very good on autofocus on whatever I've done. Uh, the be- okay, if you if you're gonna buy a system and you only have money for one lens, let's say you can buy the two hundred and fifty dollar fifty millimeter, and it's an f one point eight. It is actually really really nice. It's actually not a bad lens. It's not as fast as some of the other lenses, but it's nice um, in terms of fast focus, but it was good. Uh, and they also have a, uh, that 30 millimeter Sigma is an F1.4. It is the fastest lens in the Sigma lineup at that speed. So that, in, in that Sigma, but in the, uh, in the Sony lineup, and that's a Sony E-mount. You don't have to get an adapter for it. So it just works with Sony directly. And I've, I've had nothing but good luck with that one so far. Uh, the 35 millimeter is is basically made by Zeiss and it is uh, Sony branded. It costs half the price of the of the Zeiss version. No difference really. Uh, it's beautiful. That's a 35. But if you want to get a really good lens, and I think it's only I think it's under a thousand, if I'm not wrong, or right around there, it's the 24 to 105. It's a zoom. It is it's a beautiful zoom. I don't I don't have it here with me. It's probably in the bag, but. It's a beautiful zoom. It's about you know, not that big, a little bit bigger than than the uh, the 55, but it even has a zoom button on the side, so you can zoom the lens in and out while you're filming, just like a camcorder. But it's not on your camera; it's on the lens, and it works beautifully. the The motor is so quiet, you just don't hear it, and it does. Uh, I think. Um, I think Hugh Brownstone did a review of the 24 to 105, and he said at almost any setting you have bokeh, you've got a, a depth of field, which you don't get that often in that kind of lens, especially in a zoom. He's very impressed. He said that's the next lens he's buying. So it's, um, it's a good one. But the thing is as well, like you said, when you've, you've got a camera like that, you don't uh, skimp on the, the lens because you've spent all that money on the camera. Right. You're better off getting a good quality lens. And I'm always one like you have done there, getting the Sony matched lens for the camera because mm-hmm. that will always give you the best the yeah. best quality out of it. That And, and yeah. say the Sigmas, yes, will do a great job, but you know that the Sony ones are going to do the 100% uh, matching with that camera. Now, I that know. lens, the bigger one you got, was that specifically made just for that A9 or was it just for uh, the 70 to 200? Same? No, that's just one of their standard lenses. So, so this one is one of their standard. This will run on the A6500. It'll work on, on any of their other A7 line. Um, so no problem with that lens. It's a, it's a, you know, I tell you, it's one of the most fun lenses I've ever gotten. It just feels good. It's got about five buttons on it for different things. You can set up, you can even do memory presets for focuses. Mm-hmm. Let's say you're focusing the same thing over and over. You can set up presets. Uh, it's got beautiful manual focus and it's got really fast autofocus. Um, we did some testing outside where I was walking to and from the camera and it was perfect. Uh, you know, the one thing you get with the Panasonic that you do, I haven't really seen with this is that wobbling where it goes, that's Rick. No, 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 that's not Rick. Oh, there's Rick again. Oh, wait, 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 is he over there? No, no, he's back here. Oh, wait, what's that? And even if you're just on a tripod sitting straight interviewing somebody, it wobbles. Every so often, it'll wobble to something else. And that's, they've gotten better at that with the firmware too, but it's still not perfect. Now, there are rumors that there's a new, I think we talked about this, the new uh, GH. 5s there's a rumor it's going to come out nobody's confirmed yet and i don't think it's been announced but the gh 5s if it comes out if it's not just made up is going to be uh, kind of like the a7s where it's going to be very good for low light now how they're going to do that with a micro four thirds is going to be interesting mm. uh, because micro four thirds traditionally is not the best for low light it doesn't have enough uh sensor capability to to really get the best quality for it it could be good i mean it is a one inch sensor a little over one one and a quarter inch sensor so it should be able to to do better in low light um it'll be interesting but that's what they're talking about they're talking about the um gh5s so we'll see 
Yeah, but now you've gone all that full frame, it just makes it seem a little bit ridiculous going to the micro four thirds now, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. You know, they said still, I, I was watching a couple of reviews by um, some of the folks on, on YouTube, and they were saying that, for example, there's not that much of a difference when you look at recordings on video 4K between the micro four third and the full frame until you start zooming in. And then mm. you start seeing it doesn't quite hold up as well as it could, though it does an amazing job. It's pretty good for the most part. And a lot of people are saying that the GH5 is competing very well against the Sony F, uh, what is it, F5 and F7? All right, yeah, the camera, yeah, and those the cam are eight grand cameras. So that's not bad. <laughs> But the thing is, like you said, with that new Sony you've got, no matter what they say about different quality, it's it's just got a, a really special look, I think. That yeah. video quality, yeah. I, I just can't, I don't know how the right words to explain it, but it just you just stand out from the scene really well. Did you find that? It sort of gives I, you I, that bit more like that you, 3D you, type effect. Yeah, because you made a comment that it almost looked like it was uh, cinema. And, yeah, and you're right. Really I was surprised just, when when you yeah. said that. I went back and looked at it. I go, you know, he's right. It is it is kind of popping you out, and it mm. has. And, but I think part of that was the lighting from the uh, aperture. Mm. Was we lit? Well, actually, no. The one you saw when you said that was the previous one. Uh, that one we yeah. had no lighting. That was just in a in a in a lousy uh, fluorescent room. Though though we did add nice filters to the fluorescence, so the very soft lighting things are really clear in there. That may have been part of it. The fluorescents are very, very clear now. Uh, they're full spectrum, and they're, they're truly clear. We noticed that dark desks all of a sudden revealed everything that was on them, whereas before we couldn't tell. So it, it could have been that, but the, it has an almost cinema look. And uh, Now, for example, they don't shoot at, at, in 4K at anything over 30, 30 frames a second, whereas That's the Panasonic will shoot at 60. Mm. Yeah, but the thing is, that's not a big, a big no. problem because when people do want that slow motion or mm -hmm. that real good thing, they go to 120 frames a second in 1080p, and the Sony does that quite well as well. We should film a sketch of, of people yeah. to get about 5, 10 people and say, all right, now we're going to do a slow motion scene. I want all of you to walk very, very slowly. We're going to film you at regular speed, and you're going to walk very soon. Then we'll tell people that was filmed at 120 frames a second. <laughs> so, <laughs> poor man, slow motion. I've seen, I've seen some really uh, uh, cool videos where some people do that, where they walk exaggeratedly slowly mm -hmm. on there and then just play it back normal, and then they're going normal, and all the cars are going slow. <laughs> that must and be fun. <laughs> really good the way that they do that i forget yeah. which way they did it but i thought that was a real cool effect to it makes you look like you're going normal and all the other yeah. cars are going <laughs> slow yep that's interesting that's fine but that's it's fine so you're going to have some great fun with that uh, that cam uh, camera now how are you finding the menus on the sony because oh, they're you fine. didn't like them the first time round but yeah, the now, first time they were they were just all over the place i find it no Really not that much worse than, in fact, pretty much just like a Canon. Uh, it's really mm. easy to navigate now. It's organized. For the most part, it's very well organized. And you have your My Menu, so you could put your favorites. So now you can speed up things rather than what you had to do before is go find everything. Um, so And you can do what you can do with a lot of these. You can do C1, C2, C3. So you have custom buttons that you can use. Mm. Uh, one of the things we did is we made the auto exposure lock, which we don't use at all. Um, I don't think I've ever used it in any camera I've ever had in 20 something years. Uh, so we got rid of the AEL button and made that our face tracking button. So now one thing to keep in mind on this camera, if you are shooting in autofocus single, you cannot do face tracking. It only works in continuous. So all I right. and face tracking work in continuous mode uh, and they won't even be turned on without that. So in single mode, you just have one shot, and it just focuses on whatever you tell it to, but it won't do that consistent tracking because you're in a single single track, single track, uh, focus mode. Even then, I've seen with all the ones you've done, even without the face tracking, the, the, like that first one you did because you said, and we oh, made a mistake. I had to do we another thought, one because you didn't have the face tracking no, on. We thought we did, and then we looked that, and, you know, we didn't Fantastic have job, didn't it? It, for the most part, it worked, I'd say, 80, maybe 90% well. Um, 
I'd say right around 80, 90 percent. And every so often, like when I went back into a darker area, it would focus on my hands. Mm. And, but the thing uh, I was I was trying to that first one you was doing, you was jumping up around, hiding around the corner. Yeah. And I thought, you're not doing a very good job because it's not going out of focus. No, <laughs> no. And I was stayed. trying to see if it, I could fake it out, if I, if it would do it. And it was only a couple of areas where it, yeah, only a couple of times where it did. But hey, you could count it. But as soon as it you got back into the frame, it knew you were there and yeah. snapped straight up. It didn't take yeah. thirty seconds. Didn't take five no. seconds. Maybe a second or two. Yeah, and that's really and that's in just fantastic. regular regular focus mode. It wasn't really even mm -hmm. in tracking anything. It just says something came into the scene that looks trackable, and it just got it. Um, that's pretty amazing. Then when you go into face tracking proper, it can really do a good job. It does eye tracking, but from what I can tell, you have to keep the button pressed to eye track. So it's a little right. different. So you have to shoot with one button on that eye tracking button to, to constantly do eye tracking. Um, but other than that, face tracking is fine. It, it had no issue. I don't think I've ever... Oh, and by the way, if you want to do podcasting, I'm going to do some this weekend where I'm just mm -hmm. going to set the camera up. I'm going to walk into it and just podcast. You know some of the tests we've done before, they were all sort of blurry with the uh, Panasonic and with the Canons. And I was surprised. I go, why is it so blurry? It's not supposed to be. Um, because you had to pre-focus. This thing just automatically says, oh, hi, how you doing? And mm. boom, you are now being focused perfectly. And that backlighting with that Sony, you did really well, go back to a real bright window and it, it really took care of that because most of them, unless you do a lot of fiddling with the, yeah, the you, camera. You're, you're a silhouette. You see yourself, you're a silhouette, but it really uh, popped you out of that without you do really that how really doing anything. Yeah, and, and it did it really, I was surprised because I, I said, watch, I've seen another person do a podcast with the same thing and I said, watch, mm -hmm. it should actually focus on the face or focus on me, and even though we're backlit, it should look good, and it did. I was surprised. Mm. Um, and you notice on that 55 millimeter, the the amount of blur it has in the background, the it bokeh. Was it, 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 it was really blurred. It was, I mean, it was really harsh sunlight, mm. and yet it still saw the face. It had the face focus. I had color still, but the background was almost like painted, you know, off white. It was really rather interesting. Now the A7, you said the A, you said the A7R Mark III has arrived. It has. It, it looks almost uh, very close. It's a little smaller than the <laughs> A9, just a little, not by much. And I'll tell you, the A9 feels good in the hand, like the Panasonic or anything else. Panasonic controls and Canon controls are still cleaner. They feel better. the The dials on the Sony just seem a little cheap. They seem a little dinky. Uh, so. If that's any complaint I have is that the ergonomics are still not as nice. They're not bad, but they're not as nice. And I really would like to see a flip out screen rather than these that's stupid right. up and down. I can understand screens. why. And, and even if you don't use it, the thing is I love with those flip out ones is you turn them around and close them. So when your camera's in the bag, then mm -hmm. you're not getting them scratched. You right. don't have to look after them. You can shut them away. So if you're looking through the viewfinder mm -hmm. you don't have to put your nose marks on your on your lcd yeah, you've just got a, a, a blank background yep so. it just makes sense but for some odd reason I, I don't know i don't know why they don't do it sony sony is very innovative so i'm just surprised they haven't done the up and down and you know articulating that would just make more sense um not sure don't show uh, i'm really going to be interested to see what Mm -hmm. See what you think of the A7R Mark III. That's one that, even it's very expensive for me, but the A9 was definitely out of the market. Yeah, how the, much the it, A7 uh, was, I think, 3100 3199 I think we paid for it, which is 1300 cheaper than this one. Mm -hmm. um, it's about 4300 here, I think it is. 43. <clears throat> but the A9 Mark, well, I, I was talking to Hugh, and Hugh said that the, he gave that the Camera of the Year award, I think. I think that was one of, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the ones, or maybe it was a lens he was talking about. But the A7R Mark III really is very similar to an A9. It's like a slightly lighter version of the A9. I think it only has 300-something, 300 390 or something like that, autofocus points. I think this one has 690, which is mind-boggling. Um and it has 10 frames maximum versus 20. Though, 
I mean, we never tried 20 really for real, so we don't know how well that truly works because they said depending how you film, what you do, it might go down to 15 or 10, just depending. And they, they're all variable depending on what kind of settings you have. But still, 10 frames a second is good unless you're doing sports, and even then it's still pretty good. It's still a lot. When they say all these things about, oh, just 20 frames a second, most of the people, yeah. like even the professionals, if they're doing it, 10's enough. Mm -hmm. they've, they've got yeah. enough to get that one there. It's 20, the more you get like that is only for people who just like what to, what to do, the, just, just holding it down just uh, in the hope of getting something decent. But Now, if you had to choose like, from all the things you've read or things you've played with, the best camera of... 2017 what would you choose well if our money was uh, not an object i think at the moment it would be going for the the sony a9 yeah i'd probably agree with you i would probably either go with the a9 or the gh5 i would probably make that the oh. second camera of the year because G gh5 is probably the one i'd go for be, uh, oh. because of the the monetary amount because Bank i could get the, buck, the gh5 is amazing and it's still a yeah. damn good camera i mean don't don't get me wrong. It's got better uh, mm. IBIS than this. This has in-body image stabilization. It's okay. But if you look at the in-body on the Panasonic, oh, my God, I think you're on a gimbal. Mm. It looks like you're on a gimbal. It's so clean. Um, so I'd say, yeah, it's the G GH5 is amazing what they've done, and, and especially for video. For video, mm. they beat everybody, including Sony in terms of where they output, how they output, the, the color, space, and everything. Sony's good, and they're really good. I think focus is still better on Sony. Um, that's yeah, that's the gh that's where they're winning I think for me. weak spot is, is focus, and it's still not the best out there. I was a little disappointed when I got it. It was good. It was better than the GH4, but it still wasn't at this level, or even the, some, some of the uh, dual pixel autofocuses from Canon. Now, I, I, have to, I have to admit, I, I think with the Sonys now, I'm probably done with Canon. I don't know if I'll go back to it. Maybe I will. But I've, I've not been that, that happy with the Canon for the way we like to shoot and all that. They, they're not making 4K cameras, really. And they're not putting serious codecs in. I mean, it looks good. But do you really need a 255 gigabyte file for a one-hour video? That's a, that's a bit much. Yeah. I can that can do the same thing with the Panasonic GH5 for about 70 megabytes or 70 gigabytes. Um, that's a big difference, especially when you're editing. Now, so. Rick, I, I believe I'm just thinking in my head. You've got a camera for every day of the week, haven't you? You've still got the Canon Digital, haven't you? Uh, we have the Canon M5. The, the, the M5. Mirrorless. So. Yeah. What have you got? So you've got the Canon M5. You've got the Sony video camera, the yeah, three, RX10. No, I, I gave that away as a gift once. Oh, okay. So yep. what other cameras have you got? You've got the... <laughs> uh, we've got the FZ2500. Yeah. Oh, the XC10. XC10, which is yeah. kind of more of a camcorder. Um, but cam camera-wise, we've got the um, FZ2500 from Panasonic, the yep. Canon M5, the yep. three Sonys, that's five, two Panasonics, that's seven, I guess. We also have the um, Panasonic LX100, the uh, F, the GX8. The 6500 uh, as well, Sony? Yeah, that's Sony. So I think we've got like 10, 10 cameras. Oh, so, you've got, so you've got one for every day of the week. So that's oh, where you yeah, can plus, label them. Yeah, plus, and then we've got so, almost so. a camcorders. <laughs> so you can say, well, this is my Saturday cam. The that's A9 right. is my Saturday camera, yeah, that's and the right. A7R Max three. Oh, we forgot about that one. Yeah. That's my Sunday camera. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So, and we have lenses for Canons, and we have lenses for actually we have lens enough lenses for Canons, Panasonics, and Sony's right now. So we've got lots of lenses. What you'll have to get yourself is like they have from Home Depot. You know those. Uh, little trolleys with four wheels yes. and that's <laughs> a cart yeah. that you can take along with all your gear on but oh, and then you have to have a security guard with you to that's make sure right. nobody yeah. steals it's, it's them. a bit much it's a bit much um but that's and, another thing as well like you said with that a9 and that, i know they're expensive but with the nice and big the the when you the, the harder to steal and lose because you're not going to just leave that laying around no, are you? It's no, a big, no, it, it's, it stays close it's a to the bottom thing. And by the way, just for all those watching, no, I'm not rich. No, we don't buy these cameras because we were crazy. Well, maybe we are crazy, but um, 
it's we do this for tax time. We 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 use them for business. We do corporate videos and everything. But uh, throughout the years, we you get to invest and save tax money by buying gear. So we buy gear. It's either that or paying more taxes. So I'd rather buy gear, uh, and and that's how it works because this is only part of our business and we really don't make that much money doing this. It's everything else. So it, but it's a, it's but a I nice hobby to have. And we do do it professionally for, for corporate videos, interviews, but no, because everybody goes, how many cameras did you buy? You guys are rich. I go, no, the, the company pays for it. And, and it's an investment. We look at it that mm. way. And they said, you're going to have a great year coming throughout 2018 with all those other cameras. Cause like you was just saying for like that Sony a nine for doing interviews and that it's going to be a lot of it's a beautiful you're camera for that. people. You have to do that in the location they want. And there might be next to a horrible window and, and that, but you can yeah, really make up with that. It's a really yeah. good quality. By the way, we also got several aperture lights. We got the, uh, two of the C one. That's the, that's the, one square foot. I think that's the one that the uh, Andy X guys were using in their video. It's a nice, yeah. it, and it mm -hmm. maybe not because that nice was a long line. time ago. This is a, a, a blended light, so you could do tungsten or um, daylight, and it mm. looks really nice. At, at the beginning of the video, the the uh, tech down over one forty two. I'm mm. using the uh, the C one. As when I'm standing, that's lighting me. And it, it gives a really nice, warm, good... I mean, you can go totally cold or you can go very warm. We had it, I think, what do we have it, about 70%? We had it at, I think, 30%. We were 30% on of, of brightness, and I think we were probably 60 70% tungsten versus um, daylight. So you can blend it to almost anything, but it looked really good. But it's great. The thing is, as well, with lighting is the, the, the lighting sometimes might not be getting better, but the cameras are getting handling light they a lot are. differently. So yeah, they are. as that, the that cameras makes... get much better, you need less and less light. So yeah, and that does like make you, a big difference. Like you're um, saying, that one in the office the other day with just the fluorescent, if you had to do something that you could have got away with that, it didn't look horrible. No, that's true. It um, was really acceptable. So, I mean, you, all you would have had, if you'd had one of those little ones where you could just hold it, if you just wanted to get rid of a shadow right. on a face, you can do yeah. a lot more. Whereas years ago, you just couldn't do anything without the correct lighting inside. But now, this is said, then who needs flashes anymore? Because really, it blows people out too much. You want that natural look, don't yeah, you? The only thing good about the flash is it does provide a little bit of fill. Though, actually, a small mm -hmm. LED low will, will give you fill. Yeah, because uh, you're right. I don't like using flash that much because it's harder to control, and uh, you may run into the issue of of burning out the image too quickly. Or these cameras are sensitive. And by the way, this one has ISO of I think 102,000. And I'll tell you, we've done some tests that we didn't test this one. We tested the other one up to 51,000, the A6500, mm -hmm. and you know, <laughs> it didn't look badly. We were shocked. We go, this looks clean. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting. It's only 24 megapixels, but it's a nice clean 24. The A7R Mark III is 42 megapixels. So it, in essence, it is a medium format camera. So you can do quite a bit with that too, that you can't really do as well with this in terms of details. So it's going to be interesting. We'll see that, what next year brings. Lens got, that lens you've got on the A9, how much was that one, that lens? This one right here, that's a 1399. Oh, so that's not too bad, is it, it really? No, I thought it was going to be a lot more, but no, thirteen ninety nine. Yeah. If you get the F2.8 version, this is the F4, the oh, 2.8 okay. is 2500 I was just going to say, usually it's about 1000 more, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and so, you know yeah. what? Everybody said, don't do it. It's not worth mm. it. So I got this one. The difference, they, they said the only difference is, is a little bit better bokeh. I mean, really, who's really going to notice that the circle's just a tad more rounded? I mean, well, the average yeah. the average person who sees your picture is not going to know. So we didn't no, care. It didn't make that much that, of a difference. Has, and usually, when you when you do that, you've probably got that little the fifty millimeter lens on that will do a great job anyway. When you closer yeah. up, you don't yeah. need that bigger lens now, on if, there. With this lens, if you have the room and you film uh, an interview with this, or if you film like the shots, this gives beautiful bokeh. It's really pretty. But the one we got for the bokeh, I don't have it here. It's in the other room. 
is the 100 millimeter. It's it's a perfect portrait lens. The 100 millimeter S f two uh, f two point eight. It's an f two point eight but it has transmission of 5.6 of light. So it's a little darker, but when you're well lit, you won't really notice it. But the thing is, it's called an STF lens. And I forgot what simple uh, something focus, I forgot what it stands for, but it's a special kind of focus. And what it does is it gives you the most gorgeous backgrounds I've ever seen. I, I, I sit there and watch it going, wow. It creates these ethereal scenes behind you. It's it's just absolutely lovely. It renders just gorgeous images, and they said it's absolutely perfect for um, weddings or for uh, mm. anything where you really want that totally blurred look in the back. Very pretty. Yes, well, you've definitely got me thinking again. I've, as I said, I'd really love to get the GH five, but the great thing with looking at the Sony A seven R Mark three and the mm -hmm. A nine. Is it makes a Panasonic look cheap at thirty one hundred dollars for me with the, the, and the Panasonic 12, at for sixty 19, millimeter lens. Yeah, the Panasonic at nineteen hundred US or nineteen ninety nine, whatever it is, is a damn good price. That's a good price mm. for that camera. It's not a bad camera at all. Uh, the lenses are okay. Some of them are very good. Some aren't as good, but they have good lenses. I'm I'm thinking Sony may have better lenses. I, I, th mm. I would say they do have better lenses because what the results I've seen, Leslie, you know Leslie, that's my wife. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like anything. She's like, mm, let me see. And she saw some of the pictures we took with the Sony and she goes, wow, they make you look like good photographers now. <laughs> like, gee, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a nice <laughs> well, it's way to see. Yeah, you really suck. Away with, with this the... camera, you suck less. <laughs> But the thing is, it's like to say that sometimes can be the the trick. You might think it's that new, uh, the Sony A nine, but it could be just the, the quality of the lens as well. Because that too. It, 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 it's a combination. Yes, you can uh, have the best camera in the world, but if you haven't got a decent bit of glass in yeah. front of it, it's uh, going to take it down. Yes, yeah. it's got to do a lot with yeah. the way you compose your shots. That's true. But if That's true. the image but, is, isn't as clear as you can possibly get going into the camera, yeah. it's still going to run into run into issues. And, and, and they've said one thing, and I agree with it. They said the color space in Sony now is much better than it was. So on the A9 mm -hmm. and on the A7R III, it, the, the color's looking really good. We're but finding the thing clean. is... They've always been that. Like I've been in the electronics business since well, well since I started work about in in eighty five. Worked with selling TVs, videos, mm -hmm. and all that video cameras. And there was always there was, there was always about three different uh, uh, school of thoughts. There was the Panasonics, which all had the bluish tinge. Yes. There was the Sony's that were always a bit more skinny, orangey. Yes, saturated. And they were then, very saturated. And then there was some like the Philips, which were a bit yellowy, uh -huh. had the yellow. Yeah. And they said, there's always been that one, and I think it still is to the day. The Panasonic's have still got that cooler look. They're a little bluer. But Sony's yeah. have that warmer look. Mm -hmm. and the, no, neither of them are bad. I like both of them, but it's uh, the, the just it's just unique to them, and, and I think it's always going to stay that because it's – it's all up to the personal, like, what do you like? And I it like is, the Panasonic, yeah. but I also like the Sony look as well. <laughs> Excuse me. And it is, it makes a big difference. What, you know, what you're looking for, like you said, if you want a slightly cooler look, Panasonic does that very well. Hmm. Uh, now, they got, have gotten better. The GH5, is the color is better than what it was, for example, on the GH4. Yeah, I mean, I've got some beautiful pictures from Panasonic's from before that were nice, and I'm always shocked at how good they look. Fuji, the Fuji X-T2, for example, has very pretty colors. I just don't like the ergonomics. And I look at Canon, they have very nice color space. But, you know, it's just sort of interesting. Same with TVs, like you said. Oh, by the way, I have something, uh, possibly a little bit of bad news, and... This is on the OLEDs. I didn't know this originally. We've, we've been looking at, uh, we didn't buy it. This year we were almost going to get an OLED like about a week ago. We really thought about it for home. And we started watching all these reviews by HDTV guy and a whole mess of other people. And I know you bought the OLED and it's the one we wanted to get too. Did you know that OLEDs have a burn-in problem? 
Yeah, I've, I've heard that, but the thing is, I, I, didn't know about I can't that see like a, a problem ago. like it. Mine, even if you lose, it always has a screen save, so you don't leave it on, it goes oh, off okay. to the thing. But yes, that, I know of that, but to get the best quality, I think that is one of the downsides, like the earlier plasmas definitely did. Oh, they did, plasmas they had a problem. Had a yeah. in, but like, plasma is still one of the best qualities out there, but yeah. uh, like, I think where it's coming from as well, a lot of these negative ones to come because now that the the samsung are doing the, the QLED. QLED, the QLED it's got yeah. nothing to do with oled it's just it still is an led That's it's right. not a yeah. oled screen but yes it does do a great job as well but i think they're trying to fool people in from the set but I, i'm all the reports i've seen that the oled yes i'm sure there's there's going to be downsides of it it's newer technology uh, it's, i'm sure in five ten years it's going to be something fantastic but hey Let's face it, these days, when I first bought a, one of my a good quality TV, the Sony, many years ago, yeah. you bought it, it was $2,500, but you bought it and it, you was expecting it to last you 20 years. Right, not anymore. You buy a TV, no matter what you spent, like now, what does he spend it? I I'm expecting the technology to outweigh mine by at least, f it, I, I, in five years' time, I'll be looking for something new. It'll be something really fantastic even how good it is now i would think in five years time nearly everybody's tvs have got yeah. now will be ancient yeah. will be something so much better and i think at the most they're going to last 10 years today at the most yeah um, that, that, but but, but you're, but you're right yeah, so we, were much looking, throw away. we were looking at the qled too and then we started review, reading the reviews or watching the reviews on the qled and the QLED is very nice but they said don't be fooled by it it's still really close to a normal led they were saying mm. it's not that different. Um, so we decided to hold off. We're not going to buy anything for about a year and see what happens because I still like the, wow. the, the, the OLEDs. And the QLED looked uh -huh. nice. And when you put them at Best Buy, for example, next to each other, you're kind of going, gee, that's mm. a tough one. They both look really damn good. But they do things to light things. And so you, don't, you, don't, you always wonder what they're trying to push that year. And this year, I think Best Buy was pushing the QLEDs more. So mm. they were better displayed than the oh last year was all OLED. This year it was all QLED. I went, what are they doing? Uh, so it looked like they were pushing Samsung more. Well, Samsung's a big vendor, bigger than LG, and I think they're probably pushing their muscle around a little bit to get better display time and space. And well, they've got to make up for they've got to make up for the note fiasco. <laughs> so they've got to make it up somewhere. So they haven't lost. It. <laughs> they've yeah. got to pick it up where they can. But all I can say is, from my OLED, I'm just so pleased with it. I've never, it's just one of those TVs, you know how you look at TVs when we first got color TV. Yes. And you think, oh, how great that was. Mm -hmm. Well, this is like another section of, of watching it on that. I've got my old LED upstairs and I won't watch anything decent on it because I think I'll just get put off some just normal serial things I'll watch up there. I don't care because that's still got quite an excellent quality picture in the LED. When you want that OLED picture, just it's just fantastic, and yeah. especially now Netflix are doing the 4K uh, Ultra HD content on there. Yeah, they are. On it's looking it's nice. Just fan. It's just <clears throat> incredible, hey, and I've got Jeff. my Hi-Fi systems hooked up to it. It's just fantastic. I just can't praise it Jeff, any more than it do, is. So. Do you have the new Apple TV, the 4K one? Yes, I bought that because. It's it's nice. And it, and why, the reason why I bought that, because no matter what you pay for all these uh, TVs, I've got the smart TVs, mm -hmm. their software is still nowhere near as good as an Apple TV. The Apple they're, TV is nice. I had a Roku. Their software, and plus now, with like my LG, if I switch my Apple TV on, mm -hmm. it switches the TV on. I switch yes, that off, I know. it That's switches. And That's like cool. you, with the new one, you, you use this Siri, you just hold your microphone and you mm -hmm. say, uh, sleep now and it'll go to sleep it'll switch off or you go netflix yeah. youtube you don't have to look for anything <laughs> nope. but it, that does it did have a problem the first one it was making everything hd uh, upgrading everything to hdr quality oh, and if yeah. something is an hdr it makes it gives you banding and gives you horrible <laughs> right, looks terrible. <laughs> views on that but now they've upgraded the software so now it's not doing that so if it is a standard definition quality it will produce that it won't upgrade it to hdr by default which it was doing before that's good you know i i liked it we bought a roku we bought a couple of the roku 4ks the ultras i think they're called 
They're nice, but they don't work too well. I get a lot of HDCP errors, especially on YouTube, which is some sort of, uh, I think, um, media licensing error or content oh. error. And on, I don't get that at all on the Apple TV. But also, we notice one thing. The Roku looks good. The Apple TV looks a lot better in the video quality. I, I don't know mm. what they did, but man, it looks good. Um, so we had we bought one for work and one for home, and I'm loving it. I think the Apple TV, the new one, they finally hit it. They got it right. It runs mm. well. And I love the fact that now you can do vocal searches everywhere. So if you're in YouTube, you don't have to type anymore. You can do your search, and for the most part, it works. Um, it gets and I don't know if you've noticed... I don't know if you've noticed on that when the, in the Apple TV though, for when you set it up, you can also set it up that when you go into the search mode and you know where you can go and talk into it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, if you just click into that, it comes up comes up on your phone as an app, and you just touch it and you can type in the the search on your phone. Oh, interesting! I haven't tried that. And, and then he just does that, and you do okay. And every time you go to that, it sends a, a message to your phone. You just click on that and type in your thing. So that's fact. Because I don't have an I, I don't have an it. iPhone. Does it work on Android? Probably not. Well, I reckon it probably would do. Maybe. But the thing is, <laughs> that voice activation is excellent to do that. <clears throat> but sometimes, if you try to do certain things, and there was something I was trying to get, and it just wouldn't get it, and I just couldn't get it to understand what I was asking for and a lot of the things if you say netflix youtube it picks that up okay if you say gh5 right but if you have i'm just just trying to think what i was trying to oh, say if you but say it, a9 it, it does a up with something N -N -E. totally different it's like never finds it yeah I, I, if you if you're ever bored what i like to do is sometimes if you're ever bored go to youtube watch tech down over or something like that yeah and let let Google uh, let let uh, YouTube do the the translation to text. Hmm. It's so funny sometimes what really? it says we've said because <laughs> <laughs> oh, it picks things up. And uh, it was like it was like you sent you did a voicemail message once to me using the auto uh, the thing, oh. and it says, "Be careful, Jeff. The police are at the server." <laughs> And I thought, my God, what's that all? And it had nothing to do with that. <laughs> what was I trying to tell you? I don't remember right now. I don't know, but I, I, I still to this day don't know what it was. But it yeah. was something. And, that, and it's like you're talking to, and it's, 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 it gets everything you say wrong, but it gets it. It's just funny. Yeah, and, but sometimes you know exactly what. And I've actually had a good laugh sometimes where you see on YouTube, there's, you know, uh, people who've sent a lot of these things to mothers, grandmothers, oh, right. and all that, and it's done really horrible things, and, but they're just so funny, and you think there were things you would never say to people right. in a million years. That's funny. Just, said, just a trick is autocorrect is, uh, is, you know, technology is there to assist us, not to replace our brains. No, and it does Whatever it. you have a look yeah. at what you're sending before, you just love <laughs> uh, uh, Rely on, and I like your way now doing a voice message is much easier. You can't mess that up, can no, they? No, like you're doing messenger, that's good, that can really do well. Yeah. Well, Jeff, we were about at the end of our time, and I wanted to wish you a very happy, healthy, prosperous, and just fun 2018. Yes, you too. And I wish all our viewers. Uh, a nice prosperous uh, 2018, and hopefully, hopefully, you all get a nice new uh, I, camera I, I or video, you know, something to, go to play Australia. With. I think I think I can do it. I, I wanted to go to Australia, and we can just see what it's like. I've been dying. Yes. I've always wanted to go there. It's but as I said, we're having having a nice, nice warm summer. It's been very hot, but you're having the same thing, and it's even winter, isn't it? You're well, we're having right warm. now today. It's hot, but it's been cold. It's been in the 30s at yeah. night. Now today it's seventy seven. It's supposed to be eighty this weekend, and you just go, okay, whatever. Um, mm. We just had horrible fires all around around us. Three hundred thousand acres. It's just awful. Mm. Um, fortunately, they didn't come our way, but they were close. They were getting really close. So and now the thing over, is, with a lot of things now it's in fun. California, it's with the, it's the housing as well. Like everything, there's, you don't have a lot of brick structures or all wooden, no. aren't they? No, because of earthquakes. Yeah. Yes, where it's like here, we have a lot in bricks, so if there's, fire, there's a lot of things that stop fires, whereas when everything's wood, it doesn't take much for it to, if it just take a bit of wind takes off, right. so it's been shocking. Yeah, it's crazy. 
Well, anyway, well, hey, you have a great New Year's. And for all you folks watching, you have a good New Year's too. Stay safe, enjoy yourselves, and we'll see you next year with whatever new gear we can afford or just want to talk about. Have a good one, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye for now.